Hello everyone. I am very excited today as I have a very special guest joining me, Bharat Vaj Swarna. Bharat Vaj is a very talented data scientist with a wealth of experience in AI, machine learning, natural language processing, and also speech applications. He has worked extensively with renowned models like BERT, GPT-3, ChatGPT, and has also delved very deeply into conversational AI, chatbot, speech-to-text applications. He is a freelancer at AppWork in generative AI applications. Recently, Bharatwaj has created a very fine model called as Nandi, which I made a video about just yesterday. I would highly suggest that you check it out. I will drop the link to Nandi in video description with Bharatwaj's LinkedIn profile, of course. And this Nandi model, I have tried it out. It is mainly tailored towards Telugu language, which is one of the most beautiful language in India. India is full of beautiful languages, of course, but Telugu is one of the most beautiful. It sounds very nice. I don't understand it, but still I can tell you that. Uh, today we are going to dive into Bharatwaj's AI journey. We'll explore his work with Nandi and we will cover much more. Bharatwaj, thank you so much for your time today. I know you're a busy person. Uh, so really, really grateful that you took the time out. Please tell us something about yourself. Where are you from? Where did you grow up your education? All right. Thanks, Fat, for those I think kind words. Uh, yeah. Big thank you for inviting me also. So I think coming to my background, uh, I'm I'm from Hyderabad. I've done my uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering, which is very contradictory and different from computer science. And then post that, so uh, my journey towards AI is kind of not the regular path. I have done me mechanical engineering. Then I've worked in a bank in India, like a pure finance public sector bank. bank. Uh, then I've worked there for a couple of years. Then I had studied for the UPSC civil services exam. I'd spent almost three years studying for UPSC, just missed it by, by a few marks in the final stage. So, so almost first five years after my graduation, I had nothing to do with AI and computer science. Then, then only after that, uh, I started exploring uh, data science and AI. Like, I mean, ChatGPT wasn't there then. Uh, we were still doing uh, say preliminary like BERT and all those things. So, so that's where I started. Uh, worked for a couple of years in in a startup. Then post that, eventually, I think I moved out. And and inspired by the LinkedIn community and, and the Twitter community, I thought even I should make a living off the internet. And then that's how I, I moved out of my full-time job and then doing freelancing and now started with like open source contributions. So that's, that's Amazing. that. Amazing stuff. That is actually quite an inspirational <laughs> thing because uh, it's not really easy to come from a mechanical background and then banking, which is totally different uh, <laughs> tangent and then you know coming into AI. So why AI after banking? Why not any other field in computer science? So uh, I think after I moved out of that uh, UPSC study journey, uh, then then uh, AI was kind of booming. I was exploring career options. AI was kind of booming. That is one. And then okay. even while preparing uh, for 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 that exam, I've used like maybe a few edtech platforms, their their AI products. Personally, also we had studied a lot of AI machine learning models and in especially in econometrics economics as a subject econometrics we had studied there so that kind of inspired me to to pursue a career in data ai was like a far-fetched dream then but i wanted to pursue a career in data uh, then 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 that's where that interest slowly slowly built data I, like i started with data analysis then plotting this that like then visualization and slowly build up into ai and now deep learning and llms Makes sense. And I think that's a very good point because I still believe that AI is great and everything. But if you have a solid data background, it helps a lot. And that skill set is not going anywhere anytime soon. What do you think? True. Definitely. I think uh, anyone who starts AI now, I mean, it's a it's a big misconception. People start with prompting chat GPT. Uh, but, but I think that's, that's where, that's not where the start is. People should go back play around with X data sets in Excel sheets, in Pandas, Python, and then like start a journey from there because that will give them a very solid understanding. Uh, but yeah, 
Agree. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, spot on. Now, you created Nandi. So, can you explain the motivation behind it? Your 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 fine tuned model with Telugu. Right. So, uh, I think motivation behind Nandi. Uh, before before jumping into motivation behind Nandi, I'll just maybe take a step back and tell you uh, the how we went ahead and like how I reached where I reached with Nandi. Uh, so initially, like I said, I started with data analysis, then AI, uh, then then post that I was more of an applied AI person. So took models which were already there, developed by someone else, maybe big companies. Uh, and because of my freelance practice, I got exposure to a lot of use cases. And also because I had that background in finance and then in ed tech, I had done a lot of work in healthcare and during my undergrad. So all that diverse experience kind of helped me to be a good AI application engineer. So I wasn't into AI research still, but then I, I used to apply a lot of these tools to, to like say build products, prototypes for, for companies as part of my freelance. Right? So that gave me a lot of exposure. But then when, when I reached a certain stage there, then that is when I jumped into AI research. And then how Nandi came up is, this was a, I think a problem which I saw during my UPSC days. Uh, I mean, I was blessed enough to study like you know, in a good school, had had English medium education and all that. But but UPSC is a place where there are a lot of like students who are Hindi medium or other local mediums. And then and then the Hindu newspaper is is kind is kind of the the like a most important part of UPSC, right? It's all current affairs and all that. And that used to be available in English. Like people didn't have Hindi or Telugu or any other local languages. And I've seen a lot of my friends struggle a lot. They used to like I mean, understanding the content itself was a big challenge for them because it was in English and they never had any formal English education background. So that's where uh, I wanted to solve this problem somehow. Like what if, if and if we can use LLMs or like and then maybe somehow uh, help people understand newspapers or, or any English content in education and then democratize it to local languages. Right? So that was the main motivation and Nandi I think is a first step towards it, maybe many more to come. Awesome. And what's the story behind the word Nandi? How did you select the name? <laughs> so uh, story behind it is uh, I've seen a lot of, uh, I mean, like AI naming these things is I think a very like a difficult. If you see in the in, in today's trend, like generally all these AI models are named after animals or some birds or so that's how it is even like alpaca, llama, whatever is. So, so I wanted to have a Telugu feel because it's a Telugu LLM. Then, then I, then immediately what struck, struck me is I think Nandi is the ox. Uh, so that thing, so, so that's how it came. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, of course, uh, you must have also worked on the data set where you fine tuned that Nandi. Can you please describe in the layman's term? Um, for mere models like me, how did you create the data set from start to end? So uh, data set, I I like say I should say I'm I've like uh, used a lot of the work done by Telugu LLM Labs. I think Ramshri and Ramiteja have done beautiful work. So yeah. uh, I've used a lot lot of data from them, uh, but uh, but eventually I think uh, what what's missing the missing piece is. I mean, th though we are doing supervised fine tuning, the missing piece is DPO, which kind of makes the models even more better, even more responsive, and answers human-like. So, so that's where uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm in the process of creating that data set, but but I think yeah, data set creation takes some time. It involves a lot of manual work. It's not just like few lines of code which you write and it works. So Absolutely. I'm still in the process of creating that data set. Makes sense. Yeah, that that's awesome. Now, um, how do you? Envision Nandi making an impact in the Telugu speaking community. Do you do you have any plans to make it public to the people like you know you just gave the use case where they couldn't understand the that English newspaper Hindu, but you know it would. Do you ha have any plan to make it more mass uh, oriented? Yeah. So the idea is uh, like frankly, uh, I want I want to do that. But it comes with a with a lot of challenges. I'm I'm in the process of like say, solving a lot of them. But uh, the biggest challenge there is you have to. It's not enough just if it's a 
a text text model it has to be multimodal because when someone reads a newspaper we can't expect them to like say copy paste everything as text in, and give it as an input to the model it will not work i want to make it as simple as maybe click a picture of the article you don't understand put it in the model and then the model explains it to you in your own language right so so that's a that's a use case i want to really work towards but then yeah the, the, the journey is long i think data curation itself is is a huge challenge Excellent. there but yeah Thanks, yeah. Awesome. Now, um, coming back to your previous answer, uh, I was just wondering for the people who are very new to the field, you mentioned that uh, existing one, the Nandi's data set in Nandi is SFT or supervised fine tuning, but you're looking to do it with DPO. So can you please explain the difference in simple words for the people? What exactly do you mean by that DPO is better than SFT? So uh, DPO is, is more of an alignment, like say, uh, for example, uh, the model in supervised fine tuning, we generally give a model a question and an answer, and it, we, we train it to answer it in a particular way. DPO is a direct preference optimization in the name itself. What it means is there's a preference we give in the data set itself, right? Say, I like this answer over this, if you're answering this, I mean, this is okay, but I also have a better answer. So I want you to learn the better answer and not the uh like not the poorer answer or a yeah. less better answer right so so that's what we're trying to do it is more optimization than just uh giving out any beautiful. answer right yeah awesome beautifully explained you know spot yeah. on so thank you for that now you're also a freelancer on various websites and you might have done some generative ai work there what sort of use cases you have seen so far coming from the company? Is it all about chatbots or is it have you worked on something else too? Got it. So uh, especially I think these days there's a lot of hype around generative AI. So so a lot of companies want to do generative AI products. Uh, in, and whenever it's a text-based product, it's mostly a chatbot like 90 percent of the cases but uh apart from that i've also like done some some use cases of text generation like say emails or marketing campaigns right so those i've done uh image generation to some extent for for social media uh there, there are also use cases in finance uh say how do you like analyze a stock how do you analyze your portfolio uh like how do you recommend something so so that's where uh, there is there is still some work in generative but but then mostly most of the generative ai work these days revolves around llms I mean, use case might be chat or otherwise i mean how you approach it how you use it might be chat or otherwise and it's chat 90 percent of the cases but uh, but it revolves around llms mostly got it got it awesome now what advice would you give to aspiring data scientists or the people who are just starting out or maybe moving from other backgrounds like yourself from banking or any other field uh, to AI? What advice would you give to them? I think one thing, like I've already mentioned, the biggest thing is don't start from prompting chat GPT. So, yeah. so that should be that should be the last thing. Start from from playing around with data. Start from basic. Uh, bag of words, what to X, start from there. If you're doing NLP, like learn the basics without that. Uh, I mean, simply prompting chat GPT or playing around with LLMs directly is a, is a big no, because I mean, prompting chat GPT will give you results, but you'll just be limited there. Like you can't go the next step and take the next step and say, modify the tokenizer, create indic LLMs or, or explore complex use cases. And, and eventually what I think is, uh, all all uh, startups or all all applications which are just wrappers around some kind of open source some kind of closed source llms like a chat gpt api or something they will eventually die down and and there they and, and and people who are just doing that also the demand for them will eventually come down uh, and then there will be demand for senior experts who are who can actually tweak models like play, play at the architecture level and not just from yeah, great Absolutely. Oh, yeah, totally agree with that. Now, outside of your professional life, AI, all this stuff, what are your some of the hobbies or interests that you enjoy pursuing? Uh, I think outside outside of work, I'm I'm mostly I think 
because I've, I'm coming from the uh, from the social sciences somehow I've done that UPSC. So uh, so I generally like to look at like say uh, like say I enjoy reading about politics. I see like say what's what's going on in the political front. That that's uh, an area of interest. But uh, apart from that, I also kind of always open to exploring like what consumers are thinking, what people are thinking, how is the general behavior in the market changing, right? So, so, so th these are like, especially I like the second part. I just observe like what people want and then how, how we can build a product around people's choices. Right? So, so that's something uh, which, which I actively pursue and explore. Awesome. I'm not going to ask you any political questions, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but I will ask, yeah. definitely. I'll ask one thing. Do you watch uh, political talk shows in India? Uh, I mean, I don't watch the TV like their debates because I mean there used to be a time when I used to do it, but but now I'm totally off. I don't I don't like watch a lot of them. Okay. Okay. What is your which one is your favorite LLM? Up till now, I think uh, like everybody to everyone and even to me, it's Gemma, uh, right? So because especially because uh, because of the tokenizer, I should say, right? So it is 256k tokens. I mean, chat, even GPT-4 is around 100k, like Gemma is 256k, and it has made uh, like lives of people like me easy who just want to build build on that for like like creating Indic LLMs and all because it already comes with a lot of Indic tokens. Absolutely, yeah, love it, love the Gemma, absolutely. <laughs> well, Bharadwaj, thank you so much for your time. This was really insightful. Um, I could go on and on, but I think we should wrap it up. <laughs> so much appreciate again. I will, as I said, I will drop the link to your LinkedIn profile in the video's description, and I would highly encourage people to especially check your Nandi model. It is fabulous. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Fahad.